Okay, everybody, welcome back to the number one TV show in the world. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, I am going to be reviewing Treasure of Light by Kathleen M. O'Neill Gear. Um, this is book number two in her uh, Powers of Light series, which I have reviewed book one, An Abyss of Light. I reviewed that about a year ago. This is book two, Treasure of Light. And then book three, um, Redemption of Light, we will be getting to soon. Um, now, I uh, collect everything Kathleen O'Neill Gear writes. She's written a lot of science fiction books, a lot of Western novels, and a lot of books of, about the history of uh, Native Americans. So here's um, a collection of my... Uh, she also writes with her husband, uh, W. Michael Gear. So there's a collection of some of their science fiction stuff. Um, now we pan over the entire uh, library and let's go down here. And this is a, this is a, a massive collection of, some of, their, of all of their Westerns and Native American history books that I've got. So yeah. Kathleen O'Neill Gear and W. Michael Gear write in tandem a lot, and they also write their own standalone series. And this is one that she wrote on her own. Uh, the reason I'm wearing my Yale sweatshirt is because my first exposure, this isn't a sweatshirt, it's a t-shirt. I'm wearing my Yale t-shirt because the first exposure I ever had to W. Michael Gere's science fiction novels and Kathleen O'Neill Gere's science fiction novels was at the Yale University Bookstore when, back when I lived in New Haven, Connecticut. I lived on Wooster Square, right there next to Yale University, and right there by Pepe's Pizza, one of the best pizza places in the world. Shout out to Pepe's Pizza. Sponsor of this video! They didn't even know they were sponsoring it. But anyway, the Yale University Bookstore used to be one of my favorite places to go back in the day. That's where I bought these books. Like I said, I've got them signed. By most of my books have been signed by um, W. Michael Gear and Kathleen O'Neill Gear. Enough about that. Let's talk about the book itself. Book number two in the Powers of Light series. Let's talk about the cover. It's by San Julian. He did um, the covers of all three books. In fact, he's done a lot of the covers for the uh, W. Michael Gear and Kathleen O'Neill Gear books. This is one of my favorite book covers of all time. I don't know why, I just like it. I like the, the way, I like the glossy uh, gold patina that it has on it that just that glows in the dark. I mean, this literally glows in the dark, as do the other books. I mean, they've got just a real cool uh, gloss to them, and they're just really super badass. I mean, they are so badass, I can't even tell you how badass. Um... I just like it. I like this guy. I like the way he's painted. I like that each one of the books has one of these glowing Mia Shireen crystal balls, and we'll talk about the Mia Shireen crystal balls. And then uh, it's got uh, it's got this old retro sort of weird guy on the back. I just I like everything about this. I don't know why. I just think it's one of my favorite book covers of all time. I mean, look how it sparkles on the screen. Maybe I'm just going on too much about this. Okay, what's this book about? Massive, epic, gritty space opera. Just absolute. This came out in the 1990s. The early 90s. I think in the, actually in 1990 is when it came out. Um, because that's when I would have been living at, on Yale campus. Anyway, um, huge, epic starship space battles space opera in the same vein as um, Battlestar Galactica, if Battlestar Galactica was R-rated, Star Wars if it was R-rated, if all of those shows you love that are epic science fiction space opera were just grittier and more real and more Game of Thrones-like, this is the book. This is the series. Same with W. Michael Gere, your husband's science fiction books. They're just so awesome. I can't get over it. Um, 
basic themes before we get into the nitty gritty. I mean, it's like I said, it's about these magic stones, the Mia Shariam. They open um, gateways to God. In other words, there's a lot of talk about um, a lot of a lot of discussion of chaos theory, null singularity, God and human frailty. It's about an interstellar Armageddon, a galactic war to end all wars between. The rebels, who are the gamut people, and the alien magistrate. Um, Jeremiel Baruch is our main character. He is the rebel leader, and he has in books number one. We won't spoil books number one. But he, let's just say that he seized control of one of the um, alien magistrate's most powerful starships. And it's named the Hoyer, which is a, probably the only quibble I have with the book is... The name of the most badass starship is the Hoyer, H-O-Y-E-R. Something cooler. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, he's tasked with the rescuing his people from a planet that is being destroyed, like literally like Death Star destruction. And he's got to, before, I mean, it's just this a firestorm of destruction raining down on this planet, and he's got to rescue his people the gamut people, the rebels from the planet, but he can only rescue a fraction of them because, I mean, the, sto the, ho the Hoyer is only so big. I mean, you can't fit an entire planet full of people on the one starship. So he rescues what he can and um, takes them to the world of Tikkun and uh, just for the final uh, underground guerrilla warfare tactic type um, Armageddon that they're, the, the, the whole series is leading up towards. I mean, not only that, but it's... Uh, it's um he's kind of unknowingly even though he's rescuing his people at the same time he's kind of unknowingly putting them on this journey towards an Armageddon and um toward a prophecy that may or may not want you might not want that prophecy to be fulfilled um it's got a huge enormous cast of just well drawn out characters book 2 Book one was a great, great introduction to this, and I know I loved that, but book two is just so much better. Great, great, um, enormous cast of believable, believable characters, some of them. And this, is, like I said, this whole story revolves around God and the existence of God, and if there's a God out there in the universe, and will these Mia Shireem um, uh, crystal balls teleport you there and talk, can you talk to God? I mean, what? It, it, it's just got a lot of deep meaningful questions with um and it talks of believers that believe wholeheartedly non-believers people that think they're messiahs i mean it's just got so much going for it absolutely love this series this is a solid 10 out of 10 book for me just everything kathleen o'neill writes along with her husband w michael gear and so we will uh, that's uh, book two uh 10 out of 10 we will be doing uh, redemption of light soon leaving a review of that and that is uh, the um, Powers of Light series. If you can get a hold of these somewhere, they're great, great science fiction novels. Some of the best ever written.